today a lot about uh, a number of things that we see in the online world specifically for home improvement and remodeling companies, uh, things that you may be spending money on that you don't have to, perhaps areas that you should be spending money on but aren't at this point, uh, all with the goal of uh, driving more leads and ultimately uh, more business uh, to you. So. Uh, I see we have uh, a, a, good, a good crop of people here so far. We're going to give everybody one more minute, and then I will get started, and we'll start uh, going through the webinar, okay? So we'll be back in 60 seconds. Okay, Brian, we're gonna. You want to get started? Let's do it. Oh, all right. So, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, again, thank you for being here and for taking some time out of uh, what I'm sure are your busy schedules uh, to attend our webinar. We're going to talk this morning about five myths that are costing your home improvement business money, uh, and talk about ways that you can maybe save a few dollars on your marketing budget. Uh, and to also uh, perhaps make some investments that are, are going to generate a really positive return on investment for you uh, as you think about marketing online where so many homeowners and consumers are, are going these days as they start to uh, to make these decisions. So the way this is going to work is I'm going to do the first couple of slides and the first couple of uh, topic points here uh, on online marketing. Then I'm going to uh, pass the a baton to Brian Kaskovekian of G4 Marketing. Let me also say I'm proud that I have even attempted to pronounce his name. Uh, so it is close. Uh, <laughs> it's close, I'm sure. But <laughs> uh, so I will pass to him uh, to finish up, and then we will uh, save some time at the end to answer any of your questions uh, about the about the issues here in this webinar or any issues you have about uh, marketing and online marketing for home improvement in general, Brian and I can both answer uh, after we, after we uh, finish up with the slides. So uh, without further ado, let's jump right in and, uh, and get started. So we talk about myths, and uh, what I find is I talk with a lot of home improvement companies and, and executives at home improvement companies is that they, they have ideas in their head that may be old or they may have been told certain things that, have, that aren't true anymore. And the first myth that I have to uh, jump in on is this, which is that paid search or pay-per-click marketing, as some of you may know it, is, is easy to do. And I, this is a myth that, you know, actually Google tried to propagate years ago. Uh, by saying, "Hey, you can learn this. You can do this your your own, Mr. S on your own, Mr. Small Business Owner." Uh, and you know, maybe many many years that was true. It's not true anymore. Uh, as we go forward, we'll see that uh, paid search is uh, is much more difficult for home improvement than you imagine, and the mistakes can really can really hurt. So, go ahead. Let's move forward. And so paid search is easy to do. It's easy to do poorly. It's easy to do expensively. It's easy to do ineffectively. And it's easy to do with the wrong metrics in place. So I'm going to go through each of these one by one to explain how uh, kind of this myth came around. Uh, look, in theory, everybody can do pay-per-click marketing on their own. Um, roll back here, uh, Brian. Uh, when you try and do paid search, uh, it, it's, there is a learning curve that is fairly steep. And just because you're able to use AdWords, you're able to use Bing and Yahoo, uh, it is, 
it can be very expensive to learn and figure out what your mistakes are. So uh, some folks who do this poorly generally haven't worked in home improvement before. Maybe they've learned to do paid search for travel or for medical or for some other for retail. Those that's all fine. It's very different than doing it for uh, for home improvement where phone calls are so so important or qualified leads are so so important rather than the metrics that you can generate through AdWords themselves. A lot of people who run AdWords for home improvement and haven't done it before simply don't understand the home improvement revenue chain. They don't understand that leads are nebulous. It's the number of appointments that you set that's important. It's the number of, of sits or demos that you're able to get from those appointments uh, that's ultimately important and and more important than all of course are I paid for all these clicks I did all this work how much should I generate in re in retail sales or installed sales at the end of the day uh, most of the of the the AdWords managers or the pay-per-click managers that I've talked to simply don't understand this and they put together campaigns that, that just don't drive uh, the desired result uh, paid search is easy to do expensively. So what's happened over the last 18 months has been that Google has slashed the amount of space uh, or the number of advertisers that are allowed to do paid search and pay-per-click. Uh, so there's really only four advertisers now at the top of the page that get any uh, ma major uh, shelf space uh, per se and it's expensive to go there. It's expensive to be in those top positions and if you don't know what you're doing, if you get the geo-targeting settings wrong, if you are advertising outside of your area, particularly for expensive big ticket products like windows or siding or roofing, it can be very, very expensive to learn how to do this correctly. And so it's, it's something certainly that we've done over the years. We know the inside, know this stuff inside and out, uh, but they're expensive lessons, especially if you uh, don't know this. Uh, easy to do ineffectively. So paid search and pay-per-click you think well this is a fairly um, simple method. You you pay and you get clicks and they go to your website and it should just work. The reality is is that it is uh, much more difficult than you imagine because it's not just keywords and paid clicks. It's the ad copy. It's the landing page. It's the response paths that, that everybody has to has to use in order to get this uh, to work at kind of peak efficiency. If you get any of those areas wrong, so if you have a landing page that isn't converting people, you're just spending money on clicks that aren't going to drive leads. If you have a landing page that doesn't have phone numbers that are visible, people become frustrated and they click elsewhere. Uh, if they're on a mobile phone and they find that your site isn't responsive and isn't easy to use, they don't click to call, they click to a competitor. So there's a whole host of those factors uh, that come into play in terms of doing paid search uh, effectively uh, that, that most, I would say 95% of the advertisers I know in Home Improvement aren't doing. Uh, and this is what we study and we spend all day with, uh, all the time with, I should say, to make sure that we get it right. It's easy to do with the wrong metrics in place, and this is this is the key. With a lot of uh, a lot of AdWords managers or online marketing managers, what they do is they look just at Google. How many impressions did I get? How many clicks? What's my quality score? How did I how did I uh, score on all of those uh, measures? All of that is fine, but it has very little to do with your business. It has very little to do with what you ultimately want, which are qualified leads, qualified phone calls that turn into appointments and and sits and sits or demos. So it's easy to do with those wrong metrics in place. You really need somebody that has a true home improvement experience uh, there to help you uh, to know, yes, I'm spending money on Google, on Bing, on Yahoo. I need, I'm now figuring out exactly how much of a return I'm getting on those dollars. So why don't we move forward and I'll show you a little bit more on the paid search front. So one of the things that, that we've seen happen over the past uh, couple of years is that people have become more reluctant to scroll 
and in in response Google has become better at giving home at giving homeowners more opportunity before they scroll so this is a page we I just typed in closet organization 65% of the clicks from a search are going to come above before anybody scrolls and why is that part of it is, is laziness but the even bigger part of it is that Google has made it so easy to choose something before you click because this is where they make their money so if you look at this page you have one two three you have seven eight nine ten you have uh, a dozen choices before you have to scroll for exactly what you're looking for this is where homeowners go to make decisions they have an interest they have momentum Google wants them to carry that momentum forward and then click on the links above the fold uh, versus scrolling down to some of the free listings so the number of clicks that's happening right there is uh, incredibly high and this is where the volume is uh, for so many home improvement advertisers to get people right when they're hottest it's immediate it's deliberate you get you're getting the audience when they're kind of at the height of uh, the, the the termination phase is they're starting to think about who they can come and have work on their home very very specifically so that's certainly happening on the desktops go ahead Brian Hey Todd, quick question. All yes. of these tiles up here at the top, are those yes. paid spots as well? Uh, in some cases they are. In other cases they're just put up there as brands that Google is using as a, uh, as a way to try and get more, to deliver very specifically for the brands that uh, they have relationships with to get them right at the top of the page. So closet organization could mean a small retail purchase from Home Depot or it could mean a twenty thousand dollar walk-in closet design uh, from folks so this is uh, the brand rotisserie that they put in sometimes they'll get they won't run it at all and they'll just go with paid search ads but it's something they are uh, experimenting with right now got it cool okay so this is uh, an old search results page but it's, it's the best illustration of where people click and you can see it's right at the top of the page uh, the old the old joke is if you want to disappear forever go to page two of the Google results page uh, it's it's down in the single digits percentage wise the number of searches that go to that second page and when you go down to the third page you're at uh, fractions of one percent of the folks actually go after a click so they are clicking at the top you can see that, red, that deep red area is where they are uh, have been trained over the years to look for immediate answers and then ultimately to immediately click this is not much different on a mobile phone where so much of the traffic is coming from uh, because the mobile phones you can you're 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 not at your desk you're not settled you're looking on your phone you want to click something right there with your thumb on the device so a uh, very similar result we think happens on the paid search side uh, for mobile phones okay let's move on and the top of the page is is expensive uh, but the top of the page is also effective and this is what Google uh, figured out 18 months ago was that they get rid of a lot of the ads on the side of, of their search results page and just focused on the top of the pages and the top of the pages are where so many of the folks were going what they've been able to do is to raise the price of those ads and those spaces at the top because they know that's where people are clicking now as a home improvement company it's great that you can identify the audience you know exactly where they're going to be you know exactly uh, what they're going to do when they're looking for a home improvement solution but it's expensive and that that's where the kicker comes in is that you need a program that is going to uh, it, to at, at best minimize those higher costs but also be effective all the way through the process having the landing pages writing the ads answering the phone making sure that the offers are strong and and able to be seen by everybody that's how you gain the maximum return on investment from uh, a paid search program uh, the the days of this being easy and simple and uh, it's not that difficult those are over it's become much more complex and much more of a, 
of a blood sport at the top of the page uh, because that's where the homeowners are and that's what everybody's fighting for. Okay. I'm going to move forward. Here's what it looks like on a mobile phone. So we just looked at um, uh, we just looked at a desktop. Look at how much less space there is here. You literally have kind of three major areas to click on, and that's it. So more than 50% of all searches now are happening on the mobile phone, and the homeowners we have found uh, the number of leads coming is approaching 35% from what we've seen so far this year is coming from mobile phones for home improvement. Uh, that's up from 18% a year ago. It's just been a, a massive change in uh, how the homeowners uh, choose to uh, respond. And so we're going to, we, we do everything we can to make sure we're mobile friendly and your site should certainly be that too if you're going to do uh, online marketing. Okay, go ahead, and, Brian. And, uh, Todd, sorry, that 35% that number, I mean, that's interesting. That's for that's for big ticket items, window siding, roofing, bathrooms. It is. Uh, it is much wow. different than you know. Five years ago, what I thought was that why would anybody make such a a big decision on a right. bigger ticket okay. item, twenty, thirty thousand dollars? Why would you do that on your phone? But the screens have gotten better. The websites have gotten better. The entire experience yeah. has gotten better. And most importantly, the 45-plus demographic that uh, that we're all, that most home improvement companies are shooting for, that 45-plus demographic has completely adopted uh, mobile phones to a, as a way of uh, acquiring things, looking at things, making decisions. I have mine here, and to show you how embarrassed I am, I've actually checked my own phone during my own presentation already uh, while we're here. So. It's becoming an addictive piece of technology and one that uh, the older homeowners who would be, you know, the prospects for home improvement companies, they're trusting their phone more than ever before, and we don't see that backing off anytime soon. Wow. Crazy number. It's, it is. All right, myth number two, my website is already optimized, and this I always find to be uh, interesting when I talk with marketing managers or, or folks at home improvement companies. You know, a, a lot of times what I hear is, oh, we just spent $15,000, just spent $20,000 uh, on, on redoing our website. You know, how is it that we still have to keep doing this? And uh, and the answer is, is you know, it is a marathon, not a sprint. The website uh, that you have should always be in a state of continuing uh, optimization and in a state of continual improvement. And as I go through a couple of slides here, I'll explain uh, how you can do that. Being on the web today, if you even if you're just staying in place, that is, is difficult to do. Um, websites are never completely optimized. There's always something else that you can add. There's always more content. There's always ways to make it a little bit friendlier than it is today. And the importance of that is that your competition increases every day. There's always somebody joining the market in terms of adding new web pages, adding new content, adding new images, adding new mentions from social and reviews. It is hard just to stay in place. And so the idea is that you can use your ongoing business experiences, photos, reviews, uh, new products, to constantly tell Google, Yahoo, and Bing, hey, we're a live and vibrant company. We have things going on. There's always uh, new information for you to come back to. Um, I think when you you think about home improvement companies, it's a very it's an industry where you go in, you start a job, you hit certain steps along the way, and then the job is finished and you move on to something else. The w websites aren't that way, and you go in, you make as many changes as you can to make sure you're optimized, but then you have to keep going all the way as you as you advance on, just to make sure that the website appears to be living and breathing to everybody who comes to it. So let's move on to our next slide here. When if you're a national site, so you all buy from distributors of windows, of uh, awnings, of bathroom products. You know, they have a whole complicated series of ranking factors that it looks like a bad chemistry chart here, which I failed in high school. 
uh, it's just it's very very difficult to know who is, you know what to do for those big websites that you know have thousands of pages and tons of national competitors and they sell retail they do all sorts of things it's very difficult to figure out you know how those sites should be optimized but when we get to local sites which is on the next slide it becomes much easier and you most of the home improvement companies I deal with are local in the sense that you serve a 50 mile radius around your business you serve a hundred mile radius around your business uh, or you serve three states or one state or one DMA those sites are simpler to understand from a business perspective and Google looks at them and distinguishes the difference between say uh, a local bathroom remodeler and Kohler or American Standard they're very very different uh, sets of criteria that they go after and so let me just point out a couple of these in in the pie chart that we see here down in the lower right you're going to see something called on-page signals and on-page signals are, are really what Google when they go to your site they see they do bathroom remodeling they do shower uh, uh, tub and shower conversions they do liners or they do roof replacement uh, 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 fiberboard siding they're looking for those keywords and those products to understand what your business does and what kind of, uh, of of products and services that you provide and so that's a that's a big portion of how a local site uh, would look to Google but as you go around the go around the clock here so to speak inbound links these are links to your website still a big portion uh, of how Google attributes your success uh, reviews another portion here that you should be thinking of in terms of my site is a living breathing entity if I get new reviews to the site that will help me here on uh, the SEO front so you all have happy customers you all have folks who love the work that you've done for them get them to put reviews in because it helps your website uh, social media is another small part uh, behavioral that's what happens when people go onto your site. Google's watching. Are they spending time there? Are they looking at your pictures? Are they? Are, is there enough content to keep them engaged and moving forward? So, uh, these are all different areas that require some kind of upkeep. If you're going to do social media, make sure you have something up there a couple of times a week on Facebook, on Twitter, on. Uh, on any of your uh, Instagram as as a as, a, uh, uh, as an example with something like Instagram it's great to put up photos of the jobs you've done put up before and after photos but also put them on your website it's all this kind of constant activity that tells Google this is a live company a live business and maybe of, of interest to homeowners when they go uh, to the website okay go ahead Brian So adding these blog posts and pictures of completed jobs, uh, this doesn't take somebody who's a master at web design. You need some marketing assistant or somebody part-time who can keep doing these things for you if you don't already have them uh, in, in your uh, marketing team. Getting reviews is something often done at the sales level. Uh, right after they close out a job and they're asking for referrals, they can also ask for reviews online. If you add new product lines, absolutely add it to your website they do make a difference so make sure that you add those uh, as they come in you add and drop things from the site and again just tells Google we're real active we've got new things to look at okay all right myth number three and this one is a, a personal pet peeve of mine uh, online listings make the phone ring so one of the things that I've been bombarded with, and I know all of you have been bombarded with, are these local listing services. We'll submit your information to all of the directories across the web that homeowners use to to find providers. And um, a lot of these times, a lot of times, these are software tools, they're automated online tools that you submit your your company's info to, and then they that info goes out to all of these directories, and you get everything in one clean simple uh, uh, way to distribute everything and this is uh, one of the things that drives me insane uh, because 
I have bought all of this. I have bought all of these listings. I have tried advertising on all of them. And for all the work, it just does not drive the volume of leads and phone calls uh, that's promised in any of the uh, pitches and, and, and sales hype that I've heard over time. So let's go ahead. I'll show you the next slide. For all of these companies and all that they promise and they advertise and all that they do, most of their traffic comes from Google. You see their, their listings in Google and people do a search, click down to the listings, and then they click on these places from Google and then go there. And the, the question you know that I get from so many folks is, then why am I buying all of this listing services? Why am I listening to YP? Why am I listening to the old the old school uh, offline providers as they go online and my answer is hey they can sell what they want to sell but just realize Google is going to provide 80 to 90 percent of the leads that you need and these other folks altogether are a small small percentage of that so the next time you get some of these pitches just remember when it comes to actual leads in the door Google is far and away the biggest of everybody uh, and all these other folks are, uh, are really small relative to what Google does. Okay? So the pitches are everywhere. You, you have all gotten Yellow Pages uh, solicitations, I'm sure. This is the phone book sales machine uh, constantly overstating and pitching their importance. Um, a lot of them, they're, they're not lying. They just don't know the online behavior of homeowners and how that works. Uh, the leads just aren't there. If, and I'm being generous here, if you added it all up, all of these uh, produce less than 10% of what Google produces. So uh, focus on what's important. Uh, Google certainly falls in that category and don't worry too much about these directories. So uh, with that, I'm going to pass it over to Brian for uh, the next couple of myths. He'll take it from here and then we'll open it up for questions at the end. Cool. Thanks, Todd. And we've already got a bunch of questions that came in, but I guess we'll, we could just leave them for, uh, we'll just leave them for the end. Sure. Um, all right. So I'm going to, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the review side of things. Um, you know, myth number four, negative online reviews don't hurt sales. Um, they absolutely, they absolutely do. Um, What's happening today is today's consumers really their behavior has changed. Um, they are, you know, if I was to ask all of you, you're gonna, you know, are they better educated? You're all gonna say yes. Do they have more options? You're gonna say yes. They absolutely do um, online, and they have this way of talking to each other in a way that they've never been able to talk to each other before, and that is in the form of of reviews. So this is something that's really got to be focused on in your business. Now, Todd touched on it um, earlier when he talked about what, you know, contributes to SEO on on your site. But if we're talking about lead generation, one of the things that's really critical is not only lead generation but also actually sale selling um, pot, uh, reviews are really going to be something that's going to help you uh, get ahead. Now, we've all seen the statistics, so I'm not going to bore you with the statistics, but these numbers are growing and growing uh, every year, and they're getting to the point where it, you can pretty much say everybody. So 87% of consumers said a favorable review has con confirmed their decision to go through with a purchase. So today, you know, people are going on Google as, as, as Todd was talking about. They are clicking those links. They are going to websites, but they also want to see reviews. They want to see what other people are saying, and they want to see what recent customers are saying, what recent people are saying. You know, you look at a lot of these, these home improvement websites and big, busy companies, and They've got four Google reviews from a year ago, you know, or three years ago. Well, that's not good enough anymore. You've got to have a steady stream of things coming in, showing people, hey, 
you know, we did work yesterday and somebody was happy, right? And this is what people are, people are looking for. Um, almost everybody is reading online reviews today. This we know. Just look at your own behavior. You know, I tell the story about this stupid little device. Um, I don't have it. Uh, I don't have it here on my desk. But the stupid eight dollar device for that I read a review on. I'm looking at, you know, the reviews on a stupid eight dollar little thing. What are people doing for an eight thousand dollar remodel? Right, so they're reading online reviews. They're looking at online reviews. The other thing that they're looking at is they're looking at your star ratings. So you've got to make sure that your star rating is over four. Obviously, you don't want to be one. You don't want to be two. You don't want to be three when people see you online. Um, the difference between two stars and four stars is huge. You know, it's three and a half times more. You know, people that would do business with you if you had four stars versus people, you know, versus two stars. But I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. Let's look at the practical application of this. So this is a search that I did in Miami for a roofing company, you know. And so here's one uh, company's listings that came up. Number one is Google. Number two was Yelp in this case. Five Google reviews, 4.3 um, rating, star rating. Their number two was Yelp. Now, this is, you know, we're not going to go deep on this, and so I know a lot of you hate Yelp, and that's fine, you know. But the fact of the matter is it's there. You know, they're there, right? And in this case, it's hurting this company because they've got a one-star rating, and they've got two reviews. And by the way, this right here, this is a company that didn't even do business with them. All right? So we all know that about Yelp. Take a look at this company. Same page, you know. These are in the organic listings. This is not in the um, what, what Todd was talking about earlier, which was the top section, the paid listing. These are the organic listings right below. Take a look at this company right here. 140 Google reviews. 4.9 star rating. Now the second thing that shows up for these guys is Facebook. 4.7 rating and they call it votes, but it's, you know, but it's reviews. Right? So the question here is who's getting more leads? Right? Is it this company or this company? And then you got to ask who would you choose? If you're a consumer, if you're out there looking for windows or roofing or siding or bathrooms or whatever you're looking for, which company in this example are you going to choose? You know, I don't know about you, but I'm going to go here first because I can go and I can read a hundred, what 140 people have to say about this company, right? So that is the review component. So as Todd said before, you have happy customers. You've got to be focused on how do we get those happy customers to go online and write reviews for us in the places that matter. So number one is Google. Google is the number one place where it matters. Number two and number three behind that is Facebook and Yelp. All right? So that is, that's number four. Number five, any lead that doesn't convert that doesn't sell is a waste of time and money. So this is an area that we're actually doing a lot more work in than ever before. Um, typically, if uh, anybody knows us and Todd, if you don't mind, maybe I'll just tell everybody at the end a little bit about what G4 does. But we really, we focus on the after sale marketing, the after sale activities. But I've been getting a lot of people asking me about, well, but wait a minute, what about all of these leads that don't convert? And so there's an opportunity there in almost every company with what happens with those, with those leads. So let me just kind of quickly go through this with you, and maybe it's going to open up some ideas of what you could do inside of your own business. So the typical lead lifestyle, life cycle kind of looks like this. A lead comes in or an inquiry comes in, it's converted into an appointment. The appointment is then converted into a demo or a sit or a presentation, and then the job is either sold or it's not sold, okay? 
The problem with this model is that there's a ton of wasted opportunity. Now, here is where you're, you know, the leaky bucket. I love the leaky bucket because it's like you're feeding leads into your machine, into your business machine, but some of these are turning into sales, but what about all the ones that aren't? They're just kind of, those are the leaks in your bucket that need to be fixed. So if we look at the lead life cycle and we maximize its profitability potential, it's going to look something more like this, where you look at lead, the, the lead as it comes in as either, yes, we set an appointment or no, we didn't set an appointment. And if we didn't set the appointment, what are we doing with that contact record? What are we doing with that person? Now, those of you that use Keyword Connect, um, they do an incredible job right here. They do an incredible job of converting that raw inquiry, that nebulous lead into an appointment for your business and then they give you that appointment. But for a lot of you, you also have other lead sources coming in where a lead does come in or an inquiry does come in and for one reason or another, the appointment is not set. And so again, what do you do with those names? What do you do with those people? And in most companies, what happens is it just goes into the database and nothing happens to, to that name. So that's, that's one area of opportunity. The other is next, the appointment. So the appointment has been set. We have a, an appointment with people, but either it did demo, which is this line here, or it didn't demo. We didn't get in to see them. We did not, we weren't able to make the sales presentation for one reason or another. Again, what do you do with those people? Now, a lot of companies, and we'll talk about some ideas here of what you can do. Um, but again, a lot of companies, they'll call them once or twice and try and reschedule them, but then boom, that's it. They're on to the next crop of, of new leads. in because it is a huge opportunity it's kind of like your bonus here is what are you doing with people after the sale has been made after the job has been completed after you've collected the money what are you doing to get those reviews what are you doing to get those referrals what are you doing to get them to come back and buy more from you okay so some of the things here that you can do is with you know, the um, lead to appointment is the first thing is better scripting. I'll guarantee you if you go into Keyword Connects and you go into their call center, one of the things that they hyper focus on and probably obsess about, because this is something I used to obsess about in my home improvement business was what is the scripting that we're using to convert the lead into an appointment? So that's one thing we can look at, but then also it's what are we doing to follow up with that person if they don't set an appointment? So we've set up systems where we're emailing, where we're texting people. And in some cases, you may even add them into your mail stream, where you may direct mail out to these people. Um, but again, you've got to, you know, this is something we look at on a case-by-case -case basis, but I'm just giving you some things that you can do in each of the areas. The, the other thing here that we're going to talk about in all of these areas is long-term nurture. What are you doing to nurture these contact records, these leads, these uh, appointments that did not, one reason or another, were not run, were not set, the demos that were not sold? What type of long-term nurture system do you have? Right? So we use things like email newsletters. We use things like 
texting. We use things like you know um, email marketing that goes out just to stay in front of people, 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 because we don't know why. They didn't set the appointment necessarily. Maybe something came up. We don't know how, why they couldn't make that appointment that day, why it didn't demo. Something came up, right? We don't know why maybe they didn't buy that night. They may not give us the real reason. Maybe the day that you show up um, is the day they found out that one of their kids just got accepted to a college that they can't afford. You never know. But the situation may change a month later, three months later, six months later, a year later, two years later, right? And so the idea is to stay with them and stay with them and stay with them and nurture that lead along until something happens. I, I say, and I'll just say it, you know, among our small group here, as they buy, they die, or they opt out, right? They tell you, just stop. Don't send me anything else. Right? So in each of these areas, we could follow, basically follow the same strategy is what are we doing to recover that appointment or recover that sale? But but if we can't recover it today, this week, right now, what are we doing to make sure that we stay in touch and stay in touch and stay in touch with these people again until they do something definitive like buy like die or opt out of your your sequences um again same thing here with rehash i my contention is the further along they get in your process the further along they get in your process, the more valuable they become and the more resources they deserve to be thrown at them. Or I shouldn't say maybe deserve, but the more resources you can throw at them in order to get them to convert, right? Um, and, then, and then again, I just wanted to mention here post-sale is what are you doing to stay in touch? What are you doing to make sure that that customer stays with you and is not going to go somewhere else. What are you doing to make to help them make referrals to your business? What are you doing to get them to send you reviews? And what are you doing to develop that long-term connected relationship with them so that when the need comes up, when the opportunity comes up for the next project, they're not going to go somewhere else looking for it. So, Todd? And here, and here, I, am. here I am, guys. Thank you very much. I, I wanted to make sure Brian had uh, the spotlight, um, although there's no spotlight big enough for him. Um, the uh, I just want to wrap up here, uh, uh, and then we'll take some questions. Um, Keyword Connects, we do... Uh, Exclusive home improvement sales leads. Uh, we've been we work with hundreds of companies across the country. These leads develop into appointments 60 to 80 percent of the time. We've been doing this for over 11 years, uh, and we're also performance based. So, uh, if you wonder who's the guy with no life who sits around and figures out what Google means to home improvement all day, uh, you are looking at him. I'm that guy who's uh, yeah, exactly. I'm the guy. Uh, so. Uh, we can help you drive more leads. We can help you drive more leads that set into appointments and ultimately become installed sales uh, at really strong rates. So uh, if you if you think of it, give us a call afterwards or uh, subscribe to our blog. Uh, we'd love to uh, tell you more about what we're doing. All right. Um, I have the console here, so let's... Let me throw some questions at you, Todd. Most of the questions are for you, not for me. Um, I'll take some questions too, people. <laughs> um, all right. What about what about the Google limit of four ads at the top of the page that you mentioned? Okay. Not sure what that question so is, Todd, but you might. 
Sure. And so what happened was, uh, this was uh, about 14 or 15 months ago, uh, Google for years, and I mean for a good 12 years at least, uh, had run kind of three ads at the top and, and then another eight or nine ads on the side. And then I got, I'm not kidding, I got a text from somebody on a Thursday night saying Google is changing everything come Monday morning. And they did. They got rid of all the ads on the side of their search results pages and then just focused on, on four ads at the top. What this did was it forced a kind of you're moving up or you're moving out kind of a strategy among advertisers uh, that if you were just trying to get cheap clicks down on the right-hand side, Google was not going to allow that anymore. You were going to pay for the privilege to be up at the top where all of the uh, major traffic is and you couldn't get by on lower cost per click or lower budgets. What they did to help advertisers, and this is really where we uh, saw some very strong things, is they gave us more space, more characters, more links, more opportunity to grab that visual eye space when people are searching. So they expanded the ads and we're getting more clicks than ever in that top four but they are uh, a little bit more expensive now uh, relative to where they were uh, 15 months ago. All right. Um, how do you get to be <laughs> how do you get to be one of the 12 listed at the top outside of paying for those spots? So that's a no. fine question and the uh, outside of paying for the spots occasionally uh, Google has a tool that uh, like the rotisserie that we've shown where they identify brands and when they put brands up at the top it is uh, you should get on your knees and thank the Google gods that you are there uh, but it really it comes and goes and is something that I don't have great strategies for to be honest with you because Google doesn't reveal a lot uh, about that uh, that the top ads that we saw earlier that were free could disappear tomorrow. This has happened to me. I had a, a client where their brand was the, the first link on the page. It wasn't being paid for. And for nine months, we got all this traffic and we got all these leads and we got all this and I'm looking like a genius. And then Google just, without warning, just made the whole element disappear. So uh, if I had that answer, I'd probably be uh, wealthier, better looking and thinner, uh, but that's not uh, happening right now. So. <laughs> Yes. So, um, does pasting a review posted on our Google page count to help optimize our site? So, uh, it, it doesn't hurt. And if these are your customers, uh, it's better to have those reviews, even if they come from Google or from Yelp, it's better to have them there. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't think of it so much in terms of is it going to hurt from Google. What it will definitely help are the people who are going to your site. It's going to help them convert into a, into a lead uh, where, you know, there may be some marginal, like, you know, we're talking fractions of a percent of an issue with duplicate content. What it's going to definitely help is when people go to your site, they see a good review. Uh, it really does make a difference, and I think there's it's a cheap way to increase the ROI on your website. So I would absolutely do it by putting those. We've done it. Uh, we do it on our website. So uh, take that for what it's worth. But I think it's a good strategy to post those on your site. And if I Here's could just thing. one more one more thing on that. Include the city and town name. Make sure you have the city and town name on the review. Uh, it gives Google another clue as to where those people uh, are coming from and helps them locate your business a little better. Yeah, and one of the things that um, you can do is there are systems, and we have one, we call it authentic feedback, but there are systems where it's embedded right onto your site. So we create a page for either reviews or testimonials, and then we embed right in there a feeder of all of your reviews that are coming in, and we'll pick up Google, and we'll pick up Yelp, and we'll pick up yeah. all of those other reviews that's the way that we do it we do it for our clients is we embed that right onto their yeah. onto the sites um, best advice on ha how to handle negative reviews 
Okay, so in terms of negative reviews, the number one thing that that will help you combat negative reviews are getting other positive reviews. What happens in the life cycle of a review is it goes live and it may appear right at the top of your reviews. So you could have eight or ten great reviews and then one negative one on top. If you immediately go out and get three or four more positive reviews, it pushes that bad review down. It can push it to the second page of your, of your reviews where fewer and fewer people are going to see it. So when, I, when I, I say at the end of your sales, get a good review, those good reviews are going to overwhelm, but they're going to, if you think about it, steps like a ladder, if you have a bad review at the top rung, and then it goes down a rung and down a rung and down a rung, the further you push those leads down, the fewer people who are going to, to see it. Uh, the other thing that I've seen is you can reply to reviews on some services, don't get into a, a, a shouting contest or a troll war online. It is not worth it. Nobody ever wins. Uh, what I do say is, write a, just write a reply that says, "We're sorry that you weren't ha that you weren't happy with your experience. We'd love we'd love to make it right for you. We have hundreds of satisfied customers. Please call me." And that at least shows you're responsive. It shows you're trying to answer questions about the job and uh, is generally well received by other prospects who are looking at the review. Yeah, absolutely. Um, James is asking, uh, do you have different, oh, this is for me, Brian, do you have different uh, monthly budgets for various size companies? Um, yes, we do, of course. Um, just reach out to me and I'll be happy to, uh, to help. Um, okay. Um, we are already using Keyword Connects. Great. This is from Scott. Excellent. What do you see the future is uh, bringing to us that we might not know about that we should use our money to upgrade our marketing process or processes? Basically, what's coming down the pipe, I guess. All right, so I'll tell you a couple, a couple of things that I can share with you, uh, I think, at this point. Uh, one of the things that Google is about to make a bigger push in are, are video ads, uh, and their video ads as well as potentially using their an AdWords-type system for uh, buying television advertising. Uh, they have tried this before. It didn't work out real well, but they're just relaunching this right now, and so you may at some point be able to buy um, offline ads in conjunction with online video buys uh, that I'm keeping a real strong eye on. Um, if there's a way to do both, uh, to get views from both video and offline, and you can buy it more cost effectively, I think that's a big market that Google wants to take a shot at. So I don't think it's going to happen, you know, this summer, but it may be something that starts to gain steam uh, for ne next spring selling season. Is that something that Keyword Connects would start um, doing for for its clients? So we are. So number one, I am the biggest Google sucker out there. I will try everything and anything that they have uh, for home improvement. And this is something we've talked about with them for a long time. It's now kind of semi ready for prime time. So when we get to that, we'll absolutely be able to do that as long as it drives leads. And if it if it dry if they start to give us st other statistics and changing the measurements, you know, interactions don't mean anything to us, or you know, average viewing time. That stuff is is soft. We need it to generate leads, and as long as it does that, uh, we will continue with that. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, you talked about pictures for social media pictures. Uh, sometimes the guys in the field don't take the best pictures. Is it still better to get a picture even if it's not great to, to, to like show activity? Yes, absolutely. And um, it, it doesn't take long. It doesn't take long. You know what I see a lot of uh, folks doing, uh, especially on the kitchen and bath side, is they're taking, you know, half-day photography classes and just showing people real brief things. Here's how you frame a picture. Here's the rule of thirds. Like really basic stuff can improve the quality of, of the photos that they take. I know it sounds silly. You mean I have to have my installers take a photography class 
if you have some free time and you're or you have a, a period where you're not quite as busy, I think it's worth it to do. It's it's becoming more important to put out there with more people looking on the phone. The quality of the images becomes important, and it, you don't need to be Ansel Adams here. This isn't you know this isn't something that's going to go in an art museum. You're just trying to illustrate how you've resided a home or how you've uh, redone a roof or redone the floor in a, in a specific area. It's, it's pretty easy to do. I think it's just a little bit of training makes all the difference in the world for, for those photos. Cool. Um, Todd, with Google owning YouTube, will yes. keyword start adding YouTube AdWords to have ads that run before viewing YouTube videos? That's a great question. So it, it is a great question. And I'll tell you our experience with YouTube, we have done it for certain clients who've, who've been willing to give us budget to do it. Um, and the, the video ads, uh, a lot of times, the, what's held us back is we're at the mercy of our clients filming those ads and, and doing the production on those types of uh, those types of videos we've done all of the ads that we can buy and create ourselves there are the small banner ads or their text ads uh, but doing the the small video ads that's something we will you know we'd have to get from the client uh, and and then add and roll them that way but for absolutely if you're a client and you have that type of stuff we'd love to give it a shot cool well that's all of the, the questions uh, that was a lot of questions. Those are good questions. I mean, people, everybody's yeah. paying attention. That's great. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me, my friend. Hey, uh, Brian, thank you again. Thank and uh, thank you. Thanks to everybody for giving us uh, their time and their attention. Uh, Brian does a great job here uh, w uh, with so many things in the online marketing world. Uh, he is uh, one of the few people I actually trust and recommend to people uh, when they talk about uh, communicating after leads come in in the door so absolutely give him a call uh, and here at keyword you know we're driving a lot of leads right now the markets are hot uh, homeowners we've never seen homeowners this responsive uh, in 11 years so it's a great time to to go online and start doing things uh, everybody please have a good afternoon uh, and get in touch with Brian or uh, us here at keyword we'd love to talk with you again so enjoy enjoy the afternoon we'll talk again with you soon take care thanks Todd.